Hello everybody, this is the fifth video in behavioral sciences or epidemiology and statistics for USMLE. So we'll talk briefly now about how to select a statistical test. They might ask you in a, in a question, what type of test would you choose for this type of question? So when we, when are, when we are comparing between two means, we use something the t-test or the two sample t-test like comparing between the mean blood pressure between two groups like men and women the z-test or the two sample z-test is very similar to the t-test but it compares two means in a population not in a group like the t-test there is another test called ANOVA test which is the analysis of variance test it compares three or more means like comparing the blood pressure as we said before between three different groups the last one is called chi-square where we compare two or more categorical outcomes so what are the categorical outcomes these are outcomes or variables that have no numerical values like the days of the week, like the gender, like we're comparing between two treatment options. So we compare proportions or categorical outcomes. An example, high or low, exposure, present or non-present. A way to recognize this, that it is usually done by a two, two by two table. So in this example here, we're testing the efficacy of a drug by comparing the recovered patients and non-recovered patients between a drug and a placebo. So we use a chi-square test in this example. Another concept that we have to be familiar with is something called Pearson correlation coefficient, which, me which measures the strength and the direction of a linear relationship between two variables. So in here, the R, which, the, which is the correlation coefficient, if it's zero, that means there is no correlation between the two variables we're testing, which is the null value. If it's one, there is perfect correlation. What you have to pay attention is if R is positive. If it is positive, that means there is a positive correlation. And an increase in one variable, in the first variable, leads to an increase in the second variable, so they go in the same direction. While if the correlation is negative, there's a negative correlation, which means an increase in the first variable leads to decrease in the second variable. If we want to demonstrate the relationship between two variables graphically, we use the scattered plots. So be familiar with the scattered plots. If it's tight, if the plot is tight, it's more of a linear and it's going, it, there's increase in both axes from zero going upwards, that means a strong positive correlation. While here, there's a decrease, it starts here and decrease here, it's, it's a strong correlation because they're not scattered, they're confined but it's a negative correlation. The zero correlation, we cannot determine any relationship between the two variables. While here, it is a positive correlation, but they are scattered widely. That, that's why it's a weak positive correlation. While here, it's a weak negative correlation. That's all what you have to know about the scattered plots. Let's talk briefly about some of the rates that you might encounter in the exam. So we have the birth rate, which is the rate of live birth to a population. We have the fertility rate, which is the rate of also of live birth, but to the woman in the childbearing age, usually from 55 to 44. One important rate that you might have to pay some attention to is the mortality rates. So we have the crude mortality rate, which is the rate of deaths to the entire population so that's a crude and then we have a case mortality rate so we, we want to determine 
the mortality rate in that case or in that disease the case may, might be a disease in our examples so this is deaths from a specific cause or from a specific disease to the people with that disease so death is from a specific disease or cause to the number of persons having that disease what's the proportionate mortality rate so we compare the death is from a specific cause to the total death is so in here we compare the deaths from a specific cause to the people who have that cause or have that disease while in the proportion mortality we compared deaths from a specific cause to the total deaths then we have the maternal mortality rate which compares the maternal deaths to all live births now we'll talk about another concept called receiver operating characteristic curve or ROC which helps us to compare between two tests if it's a good test or a bad test and tells us if a test discriminates between the presence or the absence of a disease so a very good test would have the ROC passing through the left upper corner directly like this so this is a good test which has 100 sensitivity and 100 specificity so let's look at the curve so we have the y axis we have the true positive in the y axis represented by the sensitivity and we have the false positives in the x axis so as we said we want the a very good test passes directly to the left upper like this and like this so when we go upwards we increase the sensitivity we increase the true positive and we go toward the left here we decrease the false positive and we increase the specificity so as we said the closer to the curve to the upper left corner it increases the accuracy of the test the dashed line here demonstrates a completely random test like coin test tossing test we have 50 percent to each side so as we said before that sensitivity equals a true positive divided by all people who are diseased true positive plus false negative and the specificity is the true negative divided by all people who don't have the disease who are the true negative plus the false positive the ROC curve aims to decrease the false negative and the false positive it aims to decrease the falses the false negative and the false positive if we decrease the false negative then we increase the sensitivity and if, if we decrease the false positive we increase the specificity so at the end we will increase the sensitivity and the specificity as we said that the y-axis here is the sensitivity which is the true positive while the x-axis is the false positive which is 1 minus the specificity and we can say that the false negatives which are not here is 1 minus sensitivity so as we increase the y-axis we increase the sensitivity and decrease the x-axis we increase the specificity a positive likelihood ratio and a negative likelihood ratio so what's a positive likelihood ratio it's one of the pretest probabilities telling us how much more likely do we believe a patient who actually has the disease when there is a positive test result so the uh, the likelihood ratio the positive likelihood ratio equals the true positive by the false positive which is the sensitivity divided by 1 minus specificity as we said previously from the ROC curve so the proportion of patients 
who are true positive, so who test positive to the proportion of patients who don't have the condition and test positive, so the, the false positive. So what's the negative likelihood ratio? It's the proportion, it's the false negative divided by the true negative. So one minus sensitivity by specificity. So the proportion of patients who have the condition and test negative, who are the false negative, to the proportion of patients without the condition and test negative the true negative.